On the south side of Fort Worth, Texas, violent crimes are 189% higher than the national Fort Worth average. Police are working an active crime scene at a house on the city's south side. Overnight, four people are dead after a shooting in a Fort Worth neighborhood. Now, calls There's a one in six chance of becoming a victim of crime. Berry Street is one of the main roads on the south side, with I-35 splitting Berry. Just one mile west is one of the areas with the best livability scores in the United States, the TCU West Cliff area. An area where the average median income is 106,000 a what year. What do you do for a living, bro? So I do payment processing. And a median property value of $430,000 a year. Some of the most luxurious houses and attractions are just a short, short way away from a part of the city that ranks in the bottom 20% of the country. The South Side stands today as an area that's still haunted by its past. Anyone sitting, standing, walking, or driving near New York and Tucker determined to take back a neighborhood that even they were afraid to go into. But it wasn't always like that. See, Fort Worth, hence his name, was originally an army outpost. It was named after Major General William Jenkins Worth. And because of its location right on the Trinity River, it began to emerge as a city. <laughs> Fort Worth's culture historically is Western, horses, cattle, agriculture. And it was also segregated, like most Southern states, with white and colored fountains, blacks not being able to eat at white establishments. No white family in the city of Fort Worth that relishes the thought of their children attending school with Negro children of our city. The South Side, known as the Historic South Side, is the largest historic district in the southwestern United States. An area that was once all white went through a lot to become integrated. According to Texas State Historical Association.org, the 1950s were tough for the few black residents of the South Side. Fort Worth experienced significant racial tensions, with homes being purchased by African Americans being in 1953. Condemns the as an outrage of law and public order. Also, confrontational protests by white individuals occurred in 1956 when black people bought homes and churches on the south side in the Morningside Sentiments neighborhood. The people in Morningside are that will continue to use that property for... Now, that tension ultimately slowed down. The nation was integrated and the south side became where wealthy blacks would and could reside. There were several black businesses there too. The south side of Fort Worth was a place that a black family could really raise their children. Enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. In 1971, President Nixon declared a war on drugs, which not only destroyed the socioeconomic of most black communities around the country, but devastated the south side. Neighbors who do little more than drink beer and litter the property. The war on drugs was supposed to end drug use, but what it did instead was target black men. And in an area that was becoming a major drug dealing hub, that marked the beginning of the end for areas like the South This is what the street looked like through our hidden camera last week. Curb service for dealers. That marked the beginning of the end for prominent areas like the South Side. In the 80s, the war on drugs took more and more men off the streets of the South Side. The netted several arrests. So I don't worry, I'm cracking the ash with money and snug. According to U.S. statistics, the total number of black men incarcerated from 75 to 89 was the biggest jump in history. It's also worth noting that in 1986, Fort Worth recorded a record 202 homicides as crack cocaine tore across the community. The prison numbers continued to rise like crazy in the 90s, and the black community and the South Side had continued to get further and further away from what those original black settlers planned for us. You see, which America preaches is now becoming a reality. With more men gone from the houses and mothers having to work more to provide, there's really no one else but drug dealers and gangbangers to look up for the young men growing up. Crashing through another door, officers yelling for crack dealers to get down. Dating back to the 70s, in the city of LA, Stanley Tukey Williams and Raymond Washington started something that would change the black community everywhere forever. Gangs are being blamed for the drive-by murders of two men and the wounding of four others. They formed what's currently known as the Crips, and what originally was supposed to become a group to protect the neighborhood against injustice, quickly became about drugs, money, and violence, turning it into the most effective black genocide machine 
ever known to Earth. The USC Medical Center where they're reported to be in critical but stable condition tonight. Cripping had became such a phenomenon in California, the home of Hollywood, that it spread over the nation like wildfire. Gangbanging was glamorized through music, through television, through film, and sometime in the late 80s, gangs were brought right here to Fort Worth, Texas, specifically the South Side. You got the five dudes. It's called the 187 family. That's what it's called. Gang gang family. Fort Worth is one of those gang cities that have sets that originated in California, like Faux Trey Gangsta Crip, like Five Deuce Hoover Crip. There's even a Grape Street set here in Fort Worth. Either way, gang violence began to sweep the city, and in 1994, Fort Worth became a capital of the United States with 125 homicides that year. They were out here doing last night. I run them off. Yeah, I came out with my gun last night. Now, the internet likes to screw their faces up whenever they hear a city say capital. But in that title, which isn't to be glorified, isn't because of the total number of homicides. It's done based on homicides relative to the population of the city. The official name of that is per capita, which ultimately stands for per 100,000 people. To put that in perspective, New Orleans in 1994 re recorded 424 homicides. New York City last year recorded 488 of them. With just that data, you would assume that NYC had the higher homicide rate, but New York City has always in recent history been around a population of 8 million people compared to just 400,000 in New Orleans. That means that year in New Orleans, there was a 86 to 100,000 people homicide rate, which is insane compared to just a four out of every 100K in New York City. To put that into further perspective, one to five is what's considered safe in the United States. And thanks to the South Side of Fort Worth and the violence that the gangs brought to the South Side and the rest of the city, Fort Worth recorded a 28 to 100,000 people per capita homicide rate. When Crips formed in Fort Worth, not long after did the blood start to form as well. And that he led feud in California, which hey, spilled ago, out to the streets the of Fort Worth. Stop six area touched an innocent eight-year-old boy. The South Side is a Crip neighborhood, and it was at war with the East Side of Fort Worth, primarily Stop Six members of TSB, which stands for Truman Street Bloods. Residents of the city at that time call it all out war. war. Yeah, yeah, it's, okay. it's just flat out war. Just flat out war, yeah. okay. But Funeral directors got rich and the South Side continued to suffer more. By the late 90s to 2000s, all the black businesses had closed down. The South Side was and still is a shell of what it once was because the next set of black men were also taken off the streets, still in handcuffs and still in caskets, but this time it was all over colors. A lot is made of the rap beef in Fort Worth, and rightfully so. A lot of these beefs are underlying and sometimes older than the players that even play in it now. The South Side is still an area in which is very gang infested, heavy violence area, and even a heavily poverty stricken area, which matters. There are much differences as far as now in how the game is played, except now the players are a lot younger. One of the most notable leading the charge and is the current face of the South Side as far as music is Murder Gang PB. He along with his YTN rap group have engaged in public beefs with other rap groups like Channel 5 slash 8 Gang on the East Side. People from both sides have lost their life in this beef in which I won't name out of respect for everybody involved. I only highlighted to show you the magnitude in which young people still today are losing their lives literally and figuratively when it comes to the jail cell. The South Side crime rate has been and still is dipping thanks to gentrification. However, a chilling reminder of what the South Side is swept the city on October 7th, 2022. In Fort Worth are searching for whomever killed four people inside an SUV. A shooting occurred around seven on the East Jessamine block on the South Side. Police found four teenagers who had been shot in a vehicle whom all later passed South away. Of the city. Police tell us that four people were found shot inside of a vehicle. Ring camera footage shows that it was a botched robbery and detectives on that case recovered multiple weapons that had been fired during the incident. That left the city in complete shock. 
because a quadruple homicide is crazy anywhere. But these boys range from the ages of 17 to 19. And other than in someone's life. And it was honestly just a swift reminder that the South Side is a community, a strong community, that had been torn from its strength and since the 70s had started to become a breeding ground to produce such an outcome. One of the biggest stories in recent social justice history is the story that captivated the whole nation. The tragic death of Atiana Jefferson on the south side of Fort Worth. Who shot at commands and before she had a moment to respond, he shot her to death. A dedicated student and caregiver, Atiana was shot by a police officer by the name of Aaron Dean, who was responding to a simple welfare call. This event made national news and honestly started a whole whirlwind on policing and the fear that exists in the Southside community, even amongst police officers who were supposed to protect and serve it. On the South Side, a neighborhood known as the Fishbowl became the center of a significant drug operation eluding police with its tight security and vigilant lookouts. The fishbowl was a major operation and ultimately would fall. Officer Tegan Broadwater of the Fort Worth Police Department went undercover. I was as a dealer, just got my sources busted by the feds and... His relentless work took over 13 months and was critical to the Operation Fishbowl, with him even describing it in several interviews. We rounded up 51 people at the, at the end of this thing. And many of this led to the arrest of key figures in a massive roundup, dismantling a drug ring that operated as a business. This operation handed out over 600 years of cumulative sentencing, which ultimately, when you put it like that, is a loss for not just those men, but everyone involved. Today, the South Side is still faced with the same problems. The only difference is now is being gentrified. Just like most ghettos in the United States, the cycle of violence has gone on too long, and now the ones who originally had these areas want them back. As far as the white people live in this territory, 